Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Sean from Beyond the Visual Spectrum. I'm doing this uh, real short video today about um, panda bears and how at one time they were like cryptids, um, elusive and mysterious, and had connections to uh, ancient myths and China and uh, legends and folklore, but were known to be real. And uh, many people in the, uh, and scientists around the world uh, did not believe that they were, and they kind of got labeled as a uh, creature of, uh, of myth that was really made kind of like an imaginary or made-up creature, spirit world creature, what have you. But uh, the panda bears go back to, uh, I believe, South Central China, and they were originally in the lowlands, and they kind of got uh, moved out of the uh, lower areas into the mountains uh, from deforestation. But it was uh, a French uh, missionary, um, I believe his name is David Armand, who, Armand, Armand or something like that, uh, he received a skin from a hunter in 1869. And so that kind of verified there was these uh, big panda bears living out in the uh, the, the mountains of, uh, uh, of South Central China. And it was no longer a cryptid type of uh, creature that was maybe to some imaginary or not real or just a fantasy and myth. It became uh, real. Then uh, there was a zoologist who was the first Western uh, zoologist uh, Hugo uh, we Weigold, who uh, was from, I believe, Germany, uh, not sure what city, but uh, in 1916, he actually saw a live panda in the wild, and while he was doing research and investigating, so that got documented and verified, and then from you know there, it kind of uh, basically got you know, categorized into uh, the zoological database as a being official, you know, because the mainstream uh, scientists, you know, recorded it, or approved it or whatever. But anyway, I just wanted to cover this because the panda bear was actually kind of side by side with the dragon and you know mythology and, and, and China and, and it's it, it was a kind of a, a sacred animal that was connected to the the or well, the emperors would uh, China we used to keep these uh, panda bears to uh, ward off uh, evil spirits and negative energy but and I believe later on the uh, panda was associated with warriors you know so. I mean, there was a very t strong tie to these panda bears in, in Chinese uh, oral traditions, written histories, uh, arch archaeological uh, uh, history, and um, with the mythology of, of ancient China. And the, the, by the bear, or you know, panda means uh, big cat bear, I believe. But, and, and it does eat 99% uh, uh, vegetation, uh, primarily bamboo, you know, which is a grass. It does eat some other grasses, and occasionally it will eat, you know, a bird or a fish or something, but not too often. Um, the, the, the thing about this, what, the point I'm making is that people, uh, I guess we call the, the mainstream, doubted the existence, especially outside of China, you know, in other countries, they did not believe it to be uh, a real animal, you know, so when people don't see things with their own eyes, and they don't uh, do the research and just go strictly on what um, mainstream tells them, then they don't, um, you know, th their opinion is based off of what uh, mainstream science says. And cryptozoology has made discoveries. You know, there's been a variety of animals that have been uh, elusive and not believed to be real. Platypus being one of them. Uh, 
you know, having a beaver duck type look and laying eggs and, you know, but just do your research and know that, uh, that there's all kinds of possibilities of other creatures or they just, you know, are discovering things every year. So, um, they're learning more about the planet. It's not totally all discovered and all, uh, everything's in a book. They're always adding to, uh, databases and, and, and books, uh, about animals, plants, uh, everything else. So, just keep an open mind and uh, do research and keep studying. Sean with Beyond the Visual Spectrum. All right, thanks. Like and subscribe.